Hi, happy morning, everyone. Welcome to Meteor YouTube channel. I hope you're all fine and preparing well for the upcoming nursing competitive exams. Uh, I hope you're all doing well. So today also we are going to see the part two of respiratory system. So last class, uh, I have taken the respiratory system of first part. Today we are going to see second part. Okay. So starting with a small quote, with the confidence you have worn before you have started. That means anything before you are going to start a preparation, right? So some planning is important, but everything, if you start with the confidence, that is help easily what you have started, right? So start with the confidence, very, very important. Confidence, preparation, hard work, finally revision. This four thing is important for any preparation, okay? Confidence, preparation, and study, that means hard work, Finally, revision. Okay. So, with the confidence you have won before you have started. First, respiratory system part two. First question A hypoxic client who has chronic hypercapnia, at what rate the O2 should be administration? The question is the patient is hypoxic client, chronic hypercapnia, and what rate the O2 should be administered? The options, 1 to 2 liter per minute, 3 to 4 liter per minute, 4 to 6 liter per minute, 6 to 8 liter per minute. So, patient is hypoxic. That means to the tissues, the oxygen is not going, right? That is hypoxic. The tissues are not getting enough of oxygen. To whom? Who is having chronic hypercapnia? So, who is chronic hypercapnia patients? COPD, right? Chronic obstructive pulmonary disease patient those comes under chronic hypercapnia. So those COPD patient, we need to give in with a 1 to 2 liter per minute. The question is, why we have to give in a uh, minimal amount of oxygen to the COPD patient or a chronic hypercapnia patient? Because for these chronic hypercapnia like COPD patient, their high respiratory drive is not oxygen. It is because of CO2 only, they are taking a breath. For normal, for us, what we are healthy individuals, we need oxygen for a respiratory exchange, right? Uh, respiratory stimulation. But COPD patient, the stimulation is taken by the CO2. If you give more amount of oxygen to these patients, the respiratory drive will be suppressed. The patient will have the increased carbon dioxide in the body. Hypoventilation may occur. Respiratory acidosis can lead. So, right? So, we should not provide too much of oxygen to the chronic hypercapnia patient. We have to start with the 1 to 2 liter per minute, right? Yes. So the correct answer is option A. Question number two, a client who need high humidified oxygenation, which kind of mask should be used? The question is high humidified oxygenation. The options, simple face mask, venturi mask, face tent, aerosol mask. So the correct option is option D, aerosol mask. What is aerosol mask? We know simple face mask, venturi mask, face tent and all. Aerosol mask, nothing but it is a nebulizer mask. The nebulizer, uh, the kit we have, we attach it to the mask, right? It can produce the aerosol spray, which is not only for giving the humidified oxygen, as well as it will, uh, when you put on uh, respules like uh, diolin, Salbutamol, right? So those bronchodilators, the medication purpose. So it become aerosol, the minimal uh, water particles that can enter into the respiratory system. So that's a, providing a medic medication also, we can use an aerosol mask. So the client who need high humidified oxygenation, we should use aerosol mask, right? Aerosol mask. So other than that aerosol mask, we have simple face mask, face tent, venturi mask, Partial rebreather and non rebreather. So many types are there. But when compared to these type of mask, aerosol mask will provide high humidification. Right? Okay. Next question. A patient is on ventilator for a long period. All may be the complications which is given below except to what? The question is except. Hypertension, pneumothorax, emphysema, hypotension. So the answer is Hypertension, when the patient is on a ventilator, will not have the hypertension, will have the hypotension. Why hypotension happening to the ventilator patient? 
uh, option D, they given uh, hypotension, right? Because when the patient is on a ventilator, there is an increased intrathoracic pressure, which leads to decreased venous return to the heart. So when there is a decreased venous return to the heart, the heart cardiac output will be very low. So that is why the patient on ventilator will have the hypotension. Clear? Right. So option B, pneumothorax. Yes. When the patient is having the more, more time on ventilator, there is a chance of air leakage into the pleural space that leads to the pneumothorax. Next, emphysema. What is emphysema? The dilation, dilation of the alveoli because of the ventilator causing injury can lead to dilation of the uh, alveoli leads to emphysema. So these are the complications when the patient is on ventilator. Pulmonary complication, cardiac complication, GI complication, renal and nutritional complication. Right? Okay. So according to this question, option A is except. There won't be any hypertension when the patient is on long term on ventilator. Next is legionnaire's diseases are uh, what? Causing agents, they are asking. Bacterial infection, viral infection, fungal infection, protozoan infections. What is legion, uh, sorry, legionnaire's, legionnaire's or legionnaire's disease? So it is nothing but it is a bacterial infection which is caused by legionella bacteria. It's a kind of a pneumonia, right? It's a kind of a pneumonia mainly caused by that legionella bacteria. How it can how occur when the patient is having a shower heads, right? Shower bath, hot tubs, the AC system, plumbing system, decorative fountains. So these are the sources of this infection. The bacteria can enter into your respiratory tract, can cause pneumonia. That is called legionnaire's disease. When the patient is having legionnaire's disease, what are the symptoms? Shortness of breath, uh, breath fever, headache, uh, sometimes diarrhea, nausea and confusion will be there. So the treatment is antibacterial therapy. It is not a viral infection. It's not a fungal. It is not a protozoan. It is a bacterial pneumonia. Clear? Okay. Next question. The confirmatory test to diagnose the tuberculosis is what? Tuberculin test, contiferin TB cold test, X-ray chest, sputum culture. Very easy and basic question. It's the gold standard method to confirm the diagnosis is option D, sputum culture. Right? The sputum culture is the uh, gold standard to confirm the tuberculosis. Not tuberculin test or quantiferin TB cold test, gold test, X-ray chest. So these are supportive uh, di diagnosis only, but confirmatory is sputum culture. Clear? Okay. If you have any doubts regarding these questions or anything you want to add on, please my message it in the comment section. If you like the class, please press the like button. Who are all new to the our Meteor YouTube channel, please kindly subscribe to our channel. Thank you so much. We'll meet you in another class with another topic. Thank you so much.